Howdy guys, Taylor Osborne here, county agent in Gillespie County, and I've been working along with Brad Rader, the A&R agent here in Gillespie County, and Jamie Osborne, the A&R agent in uh, Lano County, and we've put together some videos for you guys with the new uh, lamb and goat classification guidelines that are, that are being released this year that will be implemented at Dallas and at the uh, 2021 stock shows, and um, with buying season upcoming, we wanted you guys to be familiar with these and wanted to give you and your, and your kids the best opportunity to, to understand these guidelines before you go out and purchase your projects. Uh, we've put some videos together um, with some sheep and to show some specific examples of, of some quality things that we're looking for in terms of breed character, the good things, and some things to look out for potentially. And uh, we want to put out there that this is just our opinion of the sheep. And these guidelines can be interpreted in different ways, but these are the things that we feel that you need to be looking for and that you need to be aware of when you're out purchasing your animals. Um, as we go through it, we'll be looking at specific things. Um, and like we said, this is all this is all our opinion. It's up to the three classifiers that day at the show to determine whether you get in or not. But these are just some things that that we've looked at and that, and that we look for whenever we're out there picking them out as well. Um, and we'll be starting with the Dorpers today, and Brad Raider will be going over that. Uh, enjoy and let us know if you have any questions. Gotcha. Well, hello everyone. This is Brad Rader, County Extension Agent in Gillespie County, and today we're here. I'm um, going to visit about some Dorper classifications and new guidelines that are coming out. Um, assisting me, we have um, Mr. Jamie Osborne, Mr. Taylor Osborne, and also Brody and Briley Rader are here helping us. Um, one thing we want to start off with the Dorpers. Um, we've got two of them here tied up. Um, these are both ewe lambs. One of them, are, one of them is sheared, and one of them is not sheared. So we can talk about a little differences as you're looking at them. Um, may not always be sheared when you're picking these out. So first off, um, right off the bat, it says they must um, be long and deep and wide and well sprung ribbed. Um, as you get over this shoe right here, you can really tell um, that she's got some depth and width. Also, this goes uh, up to head shape. Um, she's, she's got a good ear set. She also has um, a good um, uh, width between her eyes and her muzzle isn't too long and too narrow as we do as we see in some of our crossbreeds. Um, as we back off to the side, um, we see that she is has some depth of body and um, has some spring of rig, rib there. Um, when we get on to the one-third hair, this is a little uh, little tricky. A lot of times fallborns have a little more wool. Um, this you to my right, right here is a fallborn. So since they're born in the fall, they're going to have a little more wool covering. This you over here to my left that's been sheared is almost solid hair. Um, it's it's really easy to tell when you get them side by side. Some that are sheared, the 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 ones that are all hair, pretty much kind of have a shine to them. A lot of classifiers think that this hair is supposed to be coarse and harsh, and it's not. A lot of times it can be really soft, and um, and so want to want to pay attention to that too. As we turn back over here to the one that is um, not sheared, as you can see, she doesn't have any wool coming up in front of her ear. May sometimes they have a little wool cap that comes up a little far, but um, typically when we shear that off, it's not gonna come back. And then as we look at the side of this shoe, um, we can see we've got some hair right there on her forearm. We've got some hair and wool mixed into her belly. And again, on the fallborn, we're probably gonna have more wool on that belly because she hadn't shedded it. But then where I like to look is right back here in the bridge. As you can see up high, we have one color, it's mo mostly wool. And then as we slide down, um, you can see a lot more hair coming in. And when we shear that off, you're gonna see that pattern change there when the light is right um, on a lot of your sheep. So another thing we need to um, look at is um, spots and speckling in the skin. As I look at this sheared you, you can kind of tell she's got some white skin and then she has some darker skin. And we call that just pigment in the skin. And so that is very acceptable. The only problem is there's a fine line. There's different, um, uh, what do I say, different qualities or different amounts of pigment. Some of them grow, start to grow out just a little bit in the wool. And so that's where we're gonna get in some trouble this year, I think. Um, we've let some of those spotted sheep in that ha looks like pigment with some, with some sum coming out in the wool. So we're gonna have to be careful on that. One of the tough things about that is this pigment is when they're in the wool like this, you're not gonna see it. 
a lot of times even if they have some darker spots in that skin it's not going to come out until you shear it so if you buy some sheep in the wool you might want to put that caveat in there that if i shear it and they really have a lot of dark speckling that's coming through the the wool when i get these things sheared um, they may not classify so you really need to pay attention to that another reason why we got this cape you out here is the new rule of they need to be they can be black but it can't go below the knee and it can't go behind the mid or the the heart girth there this shoe's real acceptable um, but she's getting kind of close if it would go much below that front knee she'd be look at being kicked out and if she went much behind the heart girth which the heart girth we know she's real dorper but the heart girth is just right there behind her behind her line and so we look at that um, that's that's the heart girth so that's one thing we want to want to make sure of if we get a lot of color behind the sheep it can't be any more than the size of a softball accumulative so sometimes um, especially dorpers are going to have some pigment around the reproductive areas and so we need to look at that and then they're probably sometimes just going to have a spot somewhere else now if they have a big spot up on their shoulder that's not connected to their neck then that is acceptable because it's still on the shoulder in front of the heart girth one other deal we see a lot with dorpers that's going to get some people concerned is down here on the feet below the dew claw they're going to have a lot of speckling and not really speckling but spots and so those black spots are acceptable as long as they're not above the dew claw and probably if you had four black feet you might be looked at pretty hard but we do allow some color down there so these two sheep right here are pretty good in my mind um we can go you know they look like dorpers they have good head type they have good breed shape and so um i think they would both be real acceptable all right guys well as we wrap up that first video uh very very fortunate to have brad raider there to to go through those those different breed those breed characters that we're looking for and brad's one of the prominent dorper breeders here in texas and very very fortunate to get his opinion and his thoughts on some of those classification details uh if you have any questions please feel free to drop them in the comment box or even better yet contact your local county agents uh they have these these forms as well and they'd be they'd be glad to point you in the right direction as well we'll also be uh putting a link for the for the classification form in the in the comment section as well uh please give us a like and a share and and pass this on so so multiple people can see it uh, we will be posting a video every day. Uh, we did Dorpers today. We'll do South Downs the next day, Finals the next, and then Final Crosses to round it out. Uh, just appreciate you guys tuning in, and hope hopefully this is a helpful tool that you guys can use when you're out purchasing and looking at those lambs. Thank you very much.